I was 38 years old when I really found God. Mm -hmm. 38 years we old. We wouldn't have guessed that you were 38 yet. Listen, listen. I mean, because, I, you know, you, you, can, you can know church. Mm -hmm. You know, you can know religion. You can know, you can be familiar with God. But if you don't know God how you, like you know your mama, yeah. you don't know God like you know your husband, you ain't personal enough. Mm. <laughs> you, you better ain't... say it. And I had to be in that pit to get personal. So thank God for the pit, because now it's personal. Yes. <laughs> With everything you've been through, Tina, what, what kept you strong? <laughs> God, come on now. <laughs> I had the Holy Ghost. Even though the Holy Ghost was laying inside of me and it was dormant for many years, I have the Holy Spirit. I have the spirit of the living God, and nothing could help me while I was down. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I didn't want to receive help or hope from no one or nothing, so I had to get it from God. And the unfortunate thing is if you got an A plan and a B plan, and if you got options, sometimes you will choose them. And so people, you were easier to go to because I could see you. Mm -hmm. I could hear your, you audibly, so I could make more sense uh, uh, of someone that was a man or woman of God more than I could going directly to him. But the people of God wasn't enough while I was in that pit. Yeah, yeah. So I had to get acquainted with the God of all creation. And I found out that the Holy Spirit that I had that was laying dormant because I wasn't utilizing it was enough to strengthen and empower me and give me the wisdom and the knowledge that I need to navigate any situation in life. And so... The Holy Spirit did it, and I'm, I'm grateful for all of the praying. Now, Mama, I got a praying mama, mm -hmm. so I had Jesus, little Jesus, sitting up at the house with me. Yes, of course. Yeah. I was, even when I went, listen, the, the, the evil that I wanted to do, I couldn't do it because Jesus was at the house. Yeah. So it was, it, she frustrated me in the process because I was like, this is my house, Mama. Like, I paid for this house, and you in here running the house because the God in you is, is got these devils in me on lock, and I actually want to be free to act a fool. And I wasn't because my mother was there, so thank God for a praying mother. Mm -hmm. Thank God for a praying family. Family. Um, yeah. <laughs> my family, my family started a prayer line. They would pray at 7 o'clock in the morning and I think 7 o'clock at night every single day because I was so toe up. They was like, oh, no, 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 we need heaven to intervene. Mm -hmm. So they started a prayer line. My family prayed for me. God sent me people that would help me understand the demonic attacks that I was having. Mm -hmm. God sent me people to pray me through and pray with me and teach me how to prophesy over myself and pray with my husband and prophesy over him. God sent, listen, God don't need no matches. He fire all by himself. <laughs> Real talk, God plus nothing is everything. Because <laughs> while I was in that situation, I just talked to God. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I didn't want to ask nobody for help. I was just mad and angry and prideful and all of this kind of stuff. So I had to depend and rely on God, and he was enough. And the spirit of the living God sustained me, empowered me, strengthened me, changed my mind, protected me, covered me. Was, Jesus was everything. The Holy Ghost was everything. God was everything. <laughs> everything and so the uh, this is the thing that's so mind-boggling the worst year of my life mm -hmm. was also the best year of my life wow. how you work that out god but the worst year of my life was horrible because i was devastated with the infidelity mm -hmm. my father died that year mm -hmm. unexpectedly i was being sued publicly for something that was just illegitimate it was just a really rough year i had a young son my baby was was six months old and, you know and, and so it was just a really a rough year but i i found the peace of God and I, I learned how to walk above my natural situation and I learned how to see with my eyes closed. I learned how to walk by faith because everything that I saw was just horrible. So I learned to see with my mind's eye and I saw what the word said. So the experience that I had with God, with God was one that I had never had in life. So the worst year of my life was also the best year of my life because the spirit of the living God carried me through what I thought I couldn't get through. So mm -hmm. to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Um, how can people use the power of words in their marriage? Listen, <laughs> listen, the power of life and death is in your tongue. 
you will eat the fruit of what you say. I spoke death over my situation, so I had what I prophesied. Mm. I spoke that I was always frustrated. I spoke that I was always overwhelmed. I spoke to everything that was wrong with my husband. He told me, baby, you were my biggest ch champion, but nobody could criticize and critique and, you know, and, and demean me like you could. And he didn't give me any responsibility for anything that he did, but while we were in counseling, we had to become acquainted with what our truths were. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you were my biggest cheerleader, but you beat me down more than anybody, you know? And I used words to tear my relationship up. I spoke to, uh, to what, was, what was wrong. So mm -hmm. I kept getting what was wrong. I spoke to what was wrong with me, so I kept getting it. So I am a firm believer that if you speak God's word, you'll get it, because that's what I did for a year and wrote a book about it called I Need a Day to Pray. Mm -hmm. And now I live what I prayed. I live what I spoke because the word of God, it goes wherever it is sent and it accomplishes what it was sent out to uh, accomplish and it prospers wherever it was sent. So I spoke the word over my life and it prospered in my life and my marriage.